All right, welcome back to Dandara. We bounced off the museum a little bit, so we're gonna explore some alternative routes. In classic Metroidvania fashion, we may not have been going the right way, but we got oh, a lot yeah, done regardless. No, I've got absolutely no idea if I'm going even remotely the correct direction. Well, I mean, that's the joy of these, right? Is the exploration and surprise. That's the theory. That's what I'm told, anyway. Let's see here. Oh, those guys. <laughs> like, they're just annoying enough to really, like, break your groove, but... Yeah. Like, they're not terribly powerful, and they pop with a single hit, but... They don't die. They don't stay popped, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that brings us back to this room, which is only noticeable because well, I can blow up that guy for easy points. But they'll probably be back when, uh, when we come from the other direction. <laughs> probably. Wait, come here. Alright. <laughs> So that was just sort of a loot room, huh? Yeah. Uh, I thought I saw a yeah, chest I saw below a chest you. down there yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the puzzle. Very is how clever. To... Yeah. No, this. Considering that you only have like really one way of moving, you know, jumping from platform to platform, they have really done a lot with the platforms. Between having the ones that move when you're on them, uh, these rotational ones, and, uh... Heck, the ones where you have to power up to steer it back and forth, you know? Like, there's... Oh, yeah. But a lot of really clever uses of platforms, I guess, is what I'm saying. Uh, I dig it. Alright, so... What's in this room? I still don't think I could... I could, I could do this on a, a touch screen, though. <laughs> don't think so. I mean... It probably is a brilliant idea. I'm just not super great at tap games. That's fair. Like, I mean, I have an iPad, and, like, I've played a few games on them, and they can even be really fun. Ooh, There's actual a... upgrade. Nice. There's, like, a first-person spoopy game called, uh, I think, Dark Meadow. That's oh, really cool. Yeah. But, man, I am rubbish at the combat in the game because it is all, like, screen tap stuff. I also did pretty poorly on the attack system for the Steven Universe game. Kind of the same issue of, <laughs> like, Amethyst on that is supposed to be super good at clearing out, like, groups, but man, I was not good at the tap to the rhythm sort of nonsense going on there. Oh, uh, sure. I think I'd have been a lot better off if it had been buttons. I wonder if that one's gonna come to the Switch. They got another Steven Universe game in the works. Oh yeah, the, uh, that one was... Yeah, there was like a, there's like a sequel one. I remember them announcing it like forever ago and then kind of forgetting about it. Mm -hmm. Well, if they did, it'd be nice if it came out as like a, maybe a two-pack. Because oh, yeah. it's supposed to be a sequel, so it'd be nice if people could play the first one on the same, you know, platform. platform. Like how they'll occasionally do like a Kingdom Hearts, you know... 2.5 bundle or whatever where it's got oh, a bunch yeah. of the side uh, story a bunch of the non-linear stuff yeah the stuff you need to understand the plot that's going to come out in the third kingdom hearts game <laughs> of 14 yeah 40 salt away go beat up something easy those don't exist in desert land. No, that's true. Once you cross <laughs> that bridge, everything got a bit more antagonistic. It's like I'm in the middle of an empire or something. Which, I mean, hey, good job there. Like, definitely made it feel like the stakes went the stakes up. stakes definitely went up, yeah. Alright. So... It definitely looks like something is going to move those, but... Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to go bounce off the, uh... 
museum a bit. Maybe we were going the right direction, we just didn't believe it ourselves. I don't know. Or we are going way the wrong direction. Also possible. So, I just noticed something. Since you're in the desert, every time you open up a door, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like there's a bunch of sand that falls. Oh, yeah. I think that's really just a clever little detail. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it, it, it's pretty obvious you see the the uh, sand blowing by uh, on the screen just constantly. The fact that it's piling up in little places like doors, like... It's clever. It's a it's a good touch. Mm. I like seeing these pixel art style games, but without the restrictions of like actual pixel games. Oh yeah. Turns That's... out you can make pixel art look really good if it's not necessarily on a Super Nintendo. Right. Uh, it turns out if you have a bit more hardware to work with, you can do all of those effects. I mean I appreciate the limits and the creativity that resulted of that, like, it's the reason Mario has a hat, <laughs> uh, is because they couldn't animate his uh, hair moving when he fell. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's awesome that if we had a pixel art Mario game here in 2018, heck yeah, his hair could move, and mm -hmm. it would move, like, you know, not just when he was falling, but like if there was a breeze or if an attack like came close or whatever. And seeing, uh, seeing developers play with that is really cool. I know I'm super excited to play uh, Octopath Traveler kind of for the same reason. Is uh, It's, you know, a 3D pixel style game on the, uh, what is it, the Unreal Engine? Yeah. Which, I mean, that's just, that's bananas. All right, that's no good. Nope. Okay, so we gotta go. Gonna go down. But they did a great job. I mean, they've got like candle flicker from some of the ambient lighting, and just tons and tons of little background details. If this was on, like, a smaller system with less hardware, you know, like, back in the day, I guarantee it would have had to have felt a lot more sterile. Like, the hallways wouldn't have had near as much random stuff in them. Oh, yeah. Oh! If you blow up those boxes, that oh, will be able right. to reform. Uh, it chased you, like, a pretty good little ways last time. I remember that. Oh, right. We stopped going here because I got blow up by this thing. I can see why. That door is very angry and it has two of those, like, helmeted squid things to sort of give it some backup. Oof. Yeah, that's not ah. a good place to be. No, it is not. Couldn't even get my potion off. Want to go ahead and give it another go in a minute? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> 